Hey everyone, my name is Susanna, but you can call me Suze. We're going to kick the day off by singing about God together. So everyone stand up and sing along. You know when I'm lonely, you know when I'm sad, I know. And then you are with me, yeah you are with me. Trust you, yeah, I can trust you. You don't want perfection, you just want my best. And when my mind is racing, you will give me rest. God is greater, greater than my feelings, He knows everything. He knows everything God is greater, greater than my feelings He knows everything He knows everything You know when I'm lonely You know when I'm sad, I know And then you are with me Yeah, you are with me You know when I'm worried You know when I'm mad trust you. Yeah, I can trust you. You don't want perfection. You just want my best. And when my mind is racing, you will give me rest. God is greater, greater than my feelings. He knows everything. He knows everything God is greater, greater than my feelings He knows everything He knows everything you are greater than all I feel You know it all and you always will I trust in you with all that I've got Doesn't even matter if I feel it or not Woo! You are greater than all I feel You know it all and you always will I trust in you with all that I've got Doesn't even matter if I feel it or not Woo! God is greater, God is greater, greater than my feelings, my feelings. He knows everything. He everything God is greater God Great singing, everyone. We all have feelings, but no matter what, God is greater than our feelings. That's what this Blueprint series is all about. Have any of you ever seen a TV show or a YouTube video about building or construction? Well, I have the honor of being one of the hosts of the hit construction show, Build It, with my good pal, Skip. Take a look at what happened while we were filming our latest episode. Susanna, are you ready to get started on today's project? No time, Skip. You're going to have to fly solo on this one. I have to get these blueprints to the contractor working on the Joneses' house. Wait, no, Suze, don't leave me. I don't know how to fly solo. I need your help. Uh, okay, maybe I can do this. What is this project anyway? A jelly bean dispenser for Jake Allman. Got it. Well, that came together in no time. Now, uh, what to do, what to do, what to do. Huh. What to do. Construction log, time 5.42. This marks 10 minutes without Susanna. I've managed to complete the project all alone. What's next? Only time will tell. I'm 
Construction log, time 5.44. I've been trying the jelly beans, and of the 18 flavors I've tried, booger is my least favorite. Oh, oh. oh. Maybe I'll leave those for Susanna, if she ever decides to return. Construction log, time 549. Susanna has been gone for a total of 17 minutes. I can feel the loneliness starting to grip at my sad little heart. This is worse than having to eat a million booger flavored jelly beans. What are you looking at, Steve? You think you have it all figured out because you have a little friend there? Well, just you wait. Just wait until your little friend decides to let you fly solo. Suit yourself, Steve. I don't need your judgment. Gary will back me up. Isn't that right, Gary? Gary, we talked about this. You're supposed to back me up. John? What did you say, John? Oh, guys, how are we ever going to make it without Susanna? Gary, where are you going? Gary, don't you leave me too! No! Oh, man, those are some serious feelings we're dealing with here. I think there's something important we can all learn from that. Whenever we start to feel our emotions building up, we need to deal with how we are feeling. And here are three steps into doing just that. The first step is we need to stop and see how we are really feeling. This can be tough, but it's so important because if we're not careful, we can let our emotions get the best of us. If that happens, things can seem worse than they actually are, which can cause us to make decisions that we can't undo. So let's stop right now and talk about the emotions we just saw. Skip sure was feeling pretty lonely when I left the shop that day. And I know what it's like to feel lonely. Loneliness can get to us in lots of ways. Like if someone doesn't want to hang out with us, or if we can't go to school for a while. If we're not careful, we'll start to believe that no one wants to be around us or cares about us. That's when we need to do step two, which is look at what's really going on. Skip missed me because we always work together, but then he created these other friends for himself. But if Skip would have looked, he would have seen that I left because I had another important project to work on, not because I didn't want to hang out with him or help him. And if Skip would have looked even closer, he would have seen that he's never really alone at all. I know this because of step three, which brings me to the next part of how we should deal with what we feel. Listening. If Skip would have listened, he would have learned that Jesus is always with him. We've got to listen to God's blueprint for life, the Bible. God gave us the Bible as the blueprint for how we should deal with what we feel. Here, check this out. Hey, everybody, listen up. Here's what God has to say. Um, where is everybody? 
Hello? Anyone? What's up, man? We're all right here. Oh, that's a relief. I was beginning to feel really lonely. I get that. Everybody can feel lonely sometimes. But listen up. You don't have to feel lonely anymore. For real? Tell me more. In John chapter 4, there was a Samaritan woman who felt lonely. We know this because she came to draw water from the well all by herself and at a time of day when no one would be there. Well, that's kind of sad. Sounds like she didn't have any friends. It seems that way. Most women would go get water together. They would talk and laugh on the way to the well and help each other as they filled their jars. Everyone knew this woman had made some pretty bad mistakes in her life. Because of her bad decisions, no one would be friends with her. Instagram followers? Zero. I think you could say that. So Jesus was traveling from Judea to Galilee. Back then, people would walk from town to town, which could be very tiring. Dude, according to this map, that's about 70 miles. That's quite a hike. I bet it took forever. We don't know how long it took, but we do know that Jesus and his disciples stopped in Samaria. And because it was a really hot time of day, Jesus decided to rest by a well where people would come to get water. Too bad he didn't have a camel back. A camel back? I'm sure there was a camel with a back around there somewhere, but what good would that do? You know, it'd keep him hydrated. He could sip water through it as he walked. Oh, a camel back. Like those backpacks you put water in, not a camel back. That makes a lot more sense. Either way, Jesus didn't have a camel back. Instead, he asked a Samaritan woman to give him a drink. What? What did she do? Well, in those days, Jews were not supposed to talk, eat, or drink with Samaritan people. Jesus was a Jew, so the woman was shocked that he would ask her for a drink. Kind of like if a superhero were to ask their arch nemesis for a cherry slushy? <laughs> that would, like, never happen. Yeah, it was a big deal for Jesus to speak to her, let alone ask her to get him a drink. She listened as Jesus began to tell her about God's gift that could be hers. What kind of gift are we talking about? Like a new pair of Nikes? A trip to Disney World? A new car? Uh, not quite. None of those things were around back then. Besides, they don't even compare to the gift Jesus was offering her. He told her about the gift of living water. Is that the kind of water you chug down on a hot, sweaty day? No, it's not that kind of water that you drink, but the kind that helps you to never be thirsty again. Just like water satisfies our thirst, Jesus satisfies our hearts. He fills us with his love that never runs out. Sign me up for that. I bet the woman wanted this kind of water. She did. She had been living a lonely life, and she hadn't always made the right decisions. In fact, Jesus told her everything she had done. Oh, like when she spit her vegetables out in her napkin so her parents wouldn't know she didn't eat them? But, uh, oh, 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 oh. But Jesus didn't make her feel bad for those wrong things. He only wanted her to see how much he cared about her. That's the best. So how did that help her not feel lonely anymore? Well, when we decide to follow Jesus, it's like taking a sip of living water. Jesus fills our hearts up with his love. From then on, he is always with us, and there is never a reason to feel all alone. So even when I'm by myself in my room, Jesus is with me? Yep. What about when I'm with a lot of people and I don't know who they are, and I still feel alone? Jesus is with me then, too? Even then. Jesus loves you, and he loves me. When I feel lonely, Jesus is with me. The woman at the well was lonely, and one of the lies she probably believed was that no one understood her or cared about her. But Jesus came alongside her. He showed her that he loved her, and if she would follow him, she would never be alone again. That wasn't just true for the woman at the well. That's true for you and me today. The next time we're missing our friends or wondering if anyone cares about us, we can stop, look, and listen to the truth of God's Word. And then we'll remember that Jesus is always with us. And that's what we need to know today. Everyone say it with me. When I feel lonely, Jesus is with me. That's it. You can deal with how you feel when you stop, look, and listen. Now we're going to play a game called Spot It. Two cards will appear on your screen, and your job is to spot the object that appears on both of the cards as quickly as possible. You'll have 10 seconds before the cards disappear, so try to spot it fast. On your mark, get set, go!
game, everyone. Now there's one more way that we can deal with our feelings, and that's to worship God by singing. So let's do it. questions to help your family talk about what you learned today and pray together. And we'll see you guys next week.